Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPTE podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So today we've got a practice question related to the lymphatic system. This is a portion on the exam. It has a handful of questions. You can expect somewhere between three and eight questions on the 2023 content outline. Uh, this will be relatively unchanged going forward for 2024 and beyond. But again, this fits into the other systems category, certainly worth knowing. Uh, we'll talk about some of the characteristics you need to know here, but just a quick reminder before we get into that, be sure to check out ptfinalexam.com slash podcast. That's where you can sign up for all of our tips, tricks, cheat sheets, all the content you need in order to, do to dominate on test day. And plus, as we get started, just a quick thank you. Thank you for what you do. I know that you're on, in the car, you're driving somewhere, uh, probably on your way to clinical, you're exercising, whatever it is you're doing. Thank you for putting the time in to make this test really count. Appreciate what you do. And as I've said previously in previous episodes, it's going to not only affect your life, but the lives of your patients, your family, long-term. It really is a very noble thing that you're doing. So hang in there. Carry on, as I would, <laughs> as I sometimes say. So let's go ahead and dive into our content here. Our question of the day is this. I'll read it to you, give you a moment to respond, and then we'll talk about the answer together. A patient with early stage lipedema is being treated by a physical therapist to reduce lower extremity limb volume and restore function. Which of the following intervention strategies is best warranted to reduce limb volume and restore function? So again, a patient with early stage lipedema is being treated by a physical therapist to reduce lower extremity limb volume and restore function. Which of the following intervention strategies is best warranted to reduce limb volume and restore function? So the answer options are, unilateral compression garments, high level compression, bilateral compression garments, low level compression, unilateral compression garments, low level compression, and bilateral compression garments, high level compression. So it's a mix and match. Either unilateral or bilateral compression or high level or low level compression. So again, a patient with early stage lipedema being treated by a physical therapist to reduce lower extremity limb volume, restore function. Which of the following intervention strategies is best warranted to reduce limb volume and restore function? Well, this question, so I guess it's in some ways not directly related to lymphedema or the lymphatic system. However, lipedema and lymphedema are often, it's often a, a differential diagnosis that you'll be asked to to work on on test day. So I wanted to make sure that we included lipedema as a question here. And certainly as a PT, you could have some intervention strategies to help with this. So again, tangentially related to the lymphatic system, possibly into the system interactions category. Uh, this question definitely talking about the intervention strategies for lipedema. So the correct answer is option two, bilateral compression garments with low level compression. So bilateral compression garments, low level compression. So number one, bilateral compression, that is because lipedema is typically a bilateral lower extremity condition. This makes it different from lymphedema. So although lymphedema could present bilaterally, oftentimes there's an asymmetry to lymphedema. So consider the case of after radical mastectomy, you'd have one upper extremity that has significant, significantly more lymphedema than the other upper, upper extremity. Similarly, if you had a hernia repair, say an inguinal hernia repair, the secondary lymphedema is likely to show up in one lower extremity more than the other. So therefore, often there's an asymmetry to lymphedema. Other characteristic, characteristics that differentiate lipedema, or I like to think of like lipids, like fats. So lipedema from lipedema is that lipedema is the abnormal accumulation of globular fat deposition under the skin primarily affecting both low, lower extremities. However, it excludes the feet. So it goes from the ankles up to the pelvis bilaterally. So you get the symmetrical glo globular fat deposition excluding the feet. So in, these, in this case, the person would have a negative stemmer sign simply because it's not affecting the feet. You don't get the abnormal globular fat deposition in the feet. That's quite a mouthful to say that the abnormal globular fat deposition. So this abnormal fat deposition that occurs throughout bilateral lower extremities, that's what lipedema is. So back to the interventions then, lipedema, its primary intervention would include complete decongestive therapy, extremely similar to that of lymphedema. So again, you're going to be clearing out the proximal segments. You're, you're going to be pushing and moving the flow as much as you can using the lymphatic system to help drain some of the abnormal globular fat. 
Uh, that being said, one of the primary interventions would be compression therapy. So uh, another characteristic of lipedema is that it's typically quite hypersensitive and painful to the patient. So they may have allodynia, uh, meaning pain to non-oxygen stimulus, and it would be pervasive or quite prevalent throughout the entire lower extremities. So therefore, one of the ways to decrease the pain and hypersensitivity would be to try to transport or get out some of the lipidematous tissue or lipo, the abnormal globular fat. You try to give it a little bit of compression to push it or prevent it from depositing even more globular fat. So you're trying to, to not only stem the tide, but you're also trying to help or improve venous return, uh, lymphatic return. And really it that tactile sensation on the skin from that very gentle low level compression, typically around 20 millimeters of mercury or less, so that low level of compression is going to going to facilitate the lymphatic drainage, the, the venous return, and also reduce the sensitivity in a patient with lipedema. So bottom line, lipedema and lymphedema receive similar treatments in the sense that they are using the complete decongestive therapy. Now, complete decongestive therapy has a few main components. Number one, fastidious skin care. So you want to take really good care of the, of the skin. You also, as a part of complete decongestive therapy, you'll do exercise. Typically, you avoid strenuous exercise. However, ankle pumps, uh, trying to activate the muscle pump action, uh, functional type activities, uh, gentle aerobic exercise, all that would be part of your exercise intervention. Uh, included in that, or in addition to that, in complete decongestive therapy would be some type of compression. So we're talking about compression. Typically for lymphedema, you're going to have slightly more compression. So we're talking in the 20 to 40 range. Whereas with lipedema, you keep it a little bit lower. Both of them don't get a lot of heavy duty compression. Uh, generally it's fingertip pressure, just blanching pressure of your skin. Uh, again, trying to not collapse the lymphatic vessels, however, trying to support them and return their flow as best they can. So as far as part of complete decongestive therapy, you've got integumentary care, exercise, you've got compression care. And then in addition to that would be manual lymphatic drainage techniques, which are primarily designed to, to manually flow lymph through the lymphatic system. So all that to say that someone with lipedema, they're going to receive complete decongestive care in addition to medical and diet, diet management so that you can reduce the abnormal globular fat deposition, but also to address any type of pain or any other interdisciplinary needs they may have. Uh, certainly it's it's something for the interdisciplinary team. You're not just going to tackle this solo. Uh, but that being said, you'll have a primary role in treating someone with lipedema. So again, lipedema fits generally in the lymphedema character in the lymphedema category. Uh, that being said, it does have some significant differences. And so therefore, even though the word sounds about the same, lipedema or lipedema, so lipedema versus lymphedema, you'll find that uh, again the characteristics of lipedema is a bilateral. Uh, bilateral edema, globular fat deposition, excluding the feet, so a negative stemmer sign, whereas lymphedema, typically asymmetrical, it can be bilateral, but often asymmetrical, it includes the feet and fingers and hands, uh, and and yeah, you wouldn't it wouldn't be a result of fat deposition, rather it's a lymphatic fluid accumulation. So uh, both of them do respond to the complete decongestive therapy, lower level compression for lipedema, all of those are key categories or key characteristics you'll need in your intervention for lipedema and lymphedema. Uh, so there you go. Don't be thrown off on test day. If you see a question about lipedema, just tell yourself, all right, you know, I, I know lipedema. This is abnormal globular fat deposition. <laughs> and you'll probably hear me, hear my voice in your head <laughs> going through that tongue twister to try to get you to recognize that indeed it is different in etiology than your lymphatic system difficulty. So lymphedema. Uh, in any case, don't be tricked about that on test day. Uh, be sure to check out all the other podcast episodes we've got. If you haven't yet, leave us a five-star review. It really helps. We're trying to get the word out. And in the meantime, stay safe out there. Enjoy your study sessions as best you can. Seek to be the master of the content you're studying rather than just recognizing the content. Work to become the master of the content. And you'll find that's what leads you to a greater and greater score. In fact, uh, really, just in the last year or two, I feel like we've been getting more and more 800 scores, so the perfect score on test day. Uh, I just got another review from, from a student who just, just again received an 800 score on a PTA exam. So point is that the more you know the content, uh, 
it's less recognition and more just understanding and having a schema around the content, you'll find that that really helps you on test day. All right, so with that, we'll bring it to a conclusion. Thanks everyone. I'll catch you all in the next episode. Have a great day. Talk to you soon.